All right. Welcome to the August 10th, uh, 2021 Chaos Weekly Meeting. So um, why don't we go ahead and get started? We have a few, th it looks like a longer list than I think it really is <laughs> on the agenda. So I don't think a lot of these are, are going to take too long. So um, just in terms of, yeah, feel free to add anything that you would like to add as well. Um, metrics freeze, Kevin, how are we doing on that? Are we... We are not in the freeze currently. Uh, okay. The freeze will start uh, September 1st. Okay. And we will have a 30 day uh, review period. Uh, and then the, uh, the new metrics will be released in the first week of October. Okay. Uh, so this okay. was actually, this was actually discussed uh, several months back. Okay. Uh, and I believe that was a, I believe the, the, moving the release back a month was Sean's idea. Yeah. Uh, however, I thought it that never got changed in our documentation. <laughs> okay. And I, I, th I thought I remember discussing it and I had it in my head that way, but yeah, we thought, I think you weren't here last week and we did a metrics release. So every time I, every time I talk about it, I always say we're releasing the first week of October. Uh, yeah. And then I, I saw on the chat that uh, Georg had mentioned that we were entering the freeze and I'm like, Wait, oh. what? <laughs> uh, is it is it updated in the documentation, Kevin, or does that still need to happen? I went and updated the documentation. Okay, thank you. So. Okay. And I think, Ke Kevin, Sean, I think this will, you were kind of talking kind of from a risk working group perspective, so this should give you the... Yeah, we did get one in the really, in the what just... The, but now we have, we'll be able to get oh, some yeah. more out. We'll, yeah, we'll have time to get more out now. Okay, right on. At least right, one cool. meeting. Okay. At least one more metric. Right on. Well, Kevin, thank you for that. Um, I just wanted to let you know the next item is with finances. So we have been talking, so we have an open collective account that we opened up honestly, in response to, I think it was Google season of docs. Like they wanted, if I recall, Google wanted us to, if we got selected, open an open collective. Um, so we have that open and we are gonna use, we're gonna start using open collective to accept the chaos con funds with the general hope of moving over to open collective and off of LFX there community one. The big thing that Open Collective gives us is we can invoice out of Open Collective. So Sophia, this was actually in response to a question that you had asked for me. So invoicing out of LFX required the Linux Foundation to do it, which was, it's kind of disconnected from our community account. It's like they would do the invoice and I don't even know if it would get into the LFX account. Um, so the, the, distance between the invoice and our account was there was kind of a gap between those two things. And so now Open Collective can issue an invoice on behalf of the chaos project, which is nice. And then that invoice can be paid and the money can go into the Open Collective account. Um, so for the time being, we have $5,500 in um, the LFX account. We're not gonna try to move it over. We'll just expense that down at least that's the thought right now. So like Matt can too, I'm looking at you, you know how you'd want to do stickers, the DEI badging stickers? Yes. My, rec my recommendation would be to go um, like make a request to, to Georg, to the finance people, it's Ray, me and Georg to buy stickers. And then the way that it would work is you would just buy them or I would buy them or somebody would buy them. And then we can just submit that expense to LFX you see what I'm saying? So we can just expense that down through a variety of different things. So, okay, thank you. Does anybody have questions on on what kind of what's going on there? All right, see, we're moving right along. It's good. So that's what's going on there. Um, let's see. Okay, Kevin, you're going to be back up again here. So it's on the website. So one thing was the store. Could you share that link in the chat? Uh, yeah, just to see you can share it with me. So we're looking at setting up 
a store on the chaos site because it will help us doesn't it help us with shipping yeah so the the yeah shipping shipping is kind of built into it so i think we had initially talked about doing this as a way to uh we could send speaker gifts and things to people you know without having to give it to them in person we can just yeah. basically give them a, a code and they can go to the the website yep. and put the coupon code in to get whatever item uh and then in that particular situation we could we, we could even ask them to pay for shipping so we would give them the product but uh, okay you know could you pay for shipping uh so on the website we uh we did uh create thank you uh, Sophia. Kind, of a, a, kind of a prototype uh prototype uh, a couple prototype pages on, on what that would look like uh and i will share that with you in just a second so I have a question, Kevin. So if somebody yes. fills out the while you're getting that, if somebody fills out the the form to say like get a t-shirt or something like that, like mm -hmm. all the t-shirts are sitting at my house. <laughs> how right. do I how does that work? <laughs> uh so the the plugin that we're using basically would allow you to print off the, the shipping labels. Uh, so okay. you, you just print off the shipping label and throw it in a box and send okay. it on so its I would way. still have to do it. You it's would still like have it. to do it or or uh, find someone willing to volunteer to do it. Right, but it's not like we have some magic warehouse where we can... Oh, yeah, it. there's no no magic warehouse. Okay. I'd be you... glad to do that. I do a ship. I do a lot of shipping anyway. So Well, I, I will... Okay, time. and you will be the holder of... <laughs> of resistance bands and coolers and t-shirts <laughs> that sounds good to me uh I, I'll, I'll make sure I'll, I'll i promise i'll do my best at sending them out as well <laughs> <laughs> oh oops that was the that's not the right uh i know sorry. that's the word for a site yeah all right well matt as soon as well kevin's getting that right now the this is kind of moving ahead but i've ordered the t-shirts the bands and the uh, the coolers they should be here like in two to three weeks so you can you and i can just connect okay i'll get you those so uh if we wanted to if we wanted to eliminate the uh, uh someone having to ship all together i know there are there are options we could do where basically you can basically we just have the logo it's kind of like a like a cafe press type thing where these are the these are the items that we could make and then they would just apply the logo to it you basically order the product directly from whoever's making it right and the the formatting on these pages they're they're not set so this this is just to give you an idea so we would uh we would make this look nicer if we were to do it Okay, I was muted. Okay, so then I would just like add this to cart. Is that right? Yep. And then and if you click on it, it'll actually open the page. So the, the cart isn't set up. Okay. So if, if you were doing it, you would add it to the cart and then you could uh, check out. Yeah, and, and put in the coupon code to get it. Uh, okay. If you click on the chaos lunch cooler bag, uh, it does have a it'll have the there is a page for uh, a okay. description of each one. Okay. Um, okay. Is that per is that picture of a person wearing the chaos shirt a placeholder? Could we replace it with the picture of one of us wearing a chaos shirt? Yeah, I, the the <laughs> the model choices. <laughs> it was like all these guys, just like that guy. I think I had. <laughs> they all looked like that. <laughs> so, I, I even apologized in Slack. I, I didn't really know what to do about it. So yes, that would we could we could fix that. Um, all right, no, this is great. I think this so is. I, great. I would like to stress that this is just this is just one way we could do it. There are a lot of other ways we could do it. I, I like this way. Uh, it's pro I mean, it's coolers under hoodies. So, but. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for some reason, everything defaults to hoodies on here, and I I didn't. Uh, I didn't remove the hoodie category. So. <laughs> All 
all right, we should wear them as hoodies when we're <laughs> in Seattle, <laughs> the coolers. <laughs> my, my question now is how come we don't have hoodies? Because they, they really, uh, want, we, to, they really want to sell hoodies. There were some hoodies that were floating around for a while. Uh, so Those were from the Chinese um, yeah, those were friends. From Norway. So, all right, cool. Um, no, this is great. I, I think, does anybody have questions or comments on this? The pricing is solid. <laughs> so the so I'm not so without going in and setting it up, I'm not completely certain that I can only that I can only set this particular store up uh, to accept the coupon codes. Okay. Uh, I'll have to investigate that a little bit more. So the the pricing is there to discourage people from buying it. <laughs> uh, okay. Because, because ideally, the only reason we're doing this is for the coupon code, so that we can, you know, send these to people as as yeah, gifts. Don't right? want to buy a shirt. I mean, I don't. They the shirts. Uh, I think we get them for like twelve to fifteen dollars a piece. Mm -hmm. You know, when we buy them in bulk. And so, I would recommend. So this is probably really high, but I would recommend keeping the price high just to discourage a lot of sales because you don't want to be yeah, don't want spending all of your time shipping shirts, right? So, you know, I get it. Okay, well, that sounds great. I and mean, we can sort that out. And then, so Matt would need, Matt Cantu would need like some sort of access to get the printing labels. How would he get those? Oh, he's a, he's already an admin on the website. So he, uh, he has full access to, uh, this application currently okay cool so it's just it's oh go ahead matt oh it's just saying cool that that's that, right. that's convenient okay all right right on thank you kevin for that okay, so i will i will move forward with this this is not as i said it's not in any sort of finished state it's it's not set up at all this was just a uh just a bit of a prototype to see if we wanted to move forward with it so no i think this is great there will be more to discuss uh, later on, just the, the general logistics of how we want to do this and uh, kind of the, the policies as, as we kind of we kind of hinted at before, like do we actually want to get into selling these things? And, uh, so All right, that's great. Thank you for doing that. Um, okay. Any questions or comments for Kevin besides the pricing? All right, cool. Uh, looks like also the web content meetings are not happening anymore just because of poor attendance, which doesn't mean the website's not going to be updated. I just don't think we're going to have a regularly scheduled meeting. So all good there. All right, moving along, office hours, kind of the same thing. I, Sean, how did it go yesterday? Nobody came. OK. Nobody came the week before either. Sophia? I had, I had one person. OK. Um, and that was a really nice conversation. She joined an hour, 15 minutes in, and we talked for about okay. 40 minutes okay. um, about the Mozilla Community Voice Project and just sort of her role in it. And it was, I took a couple of notes, didn't want to take too much just because I don't right. want to share all of everyone's information. Um, but I, I don't know, it was, it was an interesting conversation. I hope it was somewhat helpful or productive for her. I think it was mostly just a way to share ideas and talk through problems and challenges associated with measurement. Um, but it, I don't know, I think it was, it was worthwhile. I mean, I think I spent the first hour just doing work and I like literally was about to get up and get coffee and I was like, oh, I got a person. Yeah. <laughs> There's somebody there. Um, yeah, right, so cool. I, I don't know, I think, I hope it was helpful for her. So they're not totally moot, but it doesn't seem like we're having a ton of traction. So, all right. And I know that um, maybe Elizabeth had had a couple people attend one of her office hour sessions too. I'm kind of like you, Sophia. I mean, I did it, nobody showed up for mine, but it's not like it was a huge amount of overhead. I just did other things during that time. And Sean, I'm guessing you were the exact same, just working yeah. harder. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I just, yeah, I had, I was up. On working, yeah, I just I kept my you know, I put Zoom on top so I could see in here if someone showed up. But yeah, is two I, hours? Do we want to stay with two hours? Would would one hour be? Uh, 
I mean, it was no problem to sit there and, you know, if people don't show up and it right now is like we said at the beginning of the meeting, August is a terrible time. Like everybody's on vacation. Yeah. I'm, I'm okay with two hours. I don't know about you, Sophia. I think it was fine. Okay. And um, can we get the link to sign up for a new spot? Yeah. Um, yes. How quickly I can get that link to you. <laughs> Two different parts. <laughs> uh, could somebody try to track that down in the minutes somewhere? Um, alternatively, we could just reduce the frequency. Like every other week or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay but I don't that. want it to be, I mean, it's not a big amount of overhead, but it is still someone's time that they're on call. So yeah. it's showing up then. Let's, um, okay, let's sign up. I'm going to try to find that in that. And then I'll, what do people think about moving to every other week? I think it's, it's a little bit harder for newcomers to keep track of an every other kind of thing. But if it's clear on our website, I think it's fine. I mean, given that there, maybe we would get more attendance if it wasn't every week because people would have to plan. I don't know. It's worth a try. Okay. Matt. Oh, thank you, Sophia. Matt, did you get that in the chat? Sophia, yep. put it in Thank chat. you. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. So um, just put a note in here. Let's see. One visitor past few weeks. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. Cool. Thank you. And yeah. And if you want to sign up to attend the office hours, the Sophia had put that link in the chat and in the minutes, so thank you. Um, I just wanted to make a note, there's a, a new working group, that we had talked about this just briefly last week, which was taking a look at um, like metrics models, I think that's what we're calling them, like how metrics can be drawn together in particular contexts. The app ecosystem is doing, the app ecosystem working group is doing this work. Um, I, there's, I know that there's, participants from the Asia Pacific region who also are interested in doing this work. I think we just have to have two meetings, to be honest with you, just because the app ecosystem involves people in Europe and the US, and then we have people in Asia Pacific who want to join, and it's just too difficult to find one meeting time that is really globally friendly. And so my suggestion is, is that we continue just with two for the time being, We'll figure out how to kind of connect these logistically. Maybe we actually move, I don't know. We'll just figure out how to connect these two, the ideas that come out of one with the ideas that come out of the other um, as we move forward. I just think time-wise, it's just impossible to do a totally global meeting. So that was just that. I don't know if people have thoughts on that. Uh, when, was it, when was it decided that App Ecosystem was going to work on this? Well, they are. Last week oh, at me, yeah. the lab meeting last week. Okay. They're, they're already doing this. They're already like bringing together metrics in particular contexts that could be meaningful for groups of people. And the thought was, is if they're already kind of thinking through this and how to get that work done, then we probably shouldn't reinvent the wheel to to think about how to bring metrics together. So I'll just start participating in the app ecosystem working group so I can yep. get a sense of what's going on there. Yeah, I went last, I went yesterday, I think it was, but okay. apparently they're not, have, they didn't have it yesterday. Oh, it's the August thing. Yeah, <laughs> taking, yeah. Taking time off for August. No, I get it. Yep. This, is, this okay. has been an area of concern and interest for me for a while. I guess I, I just didn't, I didn't, know they were, I didn't know they were doing anything with that. So. I don't think any of us really did until last week when we found out they were. And, you know, the 
the Asia Pacific call, this had come up and Lucas, who I don't think is on the call right now, has expressed a lot of interest in this as well. Um, and he's in California. So Lucas is kind of heading the meeting. Do you have the other meeting time, Kevin? Oh yeah, yeah, it's on the calendar. Yeah, okay. I'll just yeah, add, so. add that to my necessary meetings. Okay. Um, Google Summer of Code, I'm gonna move on. Google Summer of Code updates. I technically have something at the bottom of the hour. I might have to hand it off to somebody else to finish out the agenda. But um, Google Summer of Code updates, I think we're, we're closing in on the end of time. So at the end of the month, the students are notified whether they pass, you know, or the program. So Sean, do you know when it ends officially, like your engagement with your students? Uh, I, think in, I think in two weeks. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, I, have a, I have the Google Summer of Code on my calendar here. August 16th is when the final coding session yeah. ends. Oh, that's so like in a week. Yeah. Okay. Um, again, we say this every week, <laughs> my interaction with the, the students, at least on the metrics release stuff, has been absolutely phenomenal. It's just been amazing. <laughs> like, absolutely amazing. Um, all right, so that's that. Um, let's see, Chaos Con. Yeah, I know. So Matt, you would like to get some stickers to bring to Chaos Con? Yeah, it sounds like I have a clear avenue to request those now. Yeah, I think so too. Okay. Okay. Um, why don't you price it out a little bit and you and I can chat. Okay, sounds good. And then um, Gary usually likes to get poker chips for the events. Does anybody have those poker chips? You know what I'm talking about? They're like branded for the event. So we'll, we'll go ahead and do that as well, I suspect. Um, who put in virtual event here? Uh, I dropped that in. Okay. Uh, I don't think we, we haven't talked about that in a little while. However, no. uh, during the, uh, the initial planning where we were trying to decide if we were going to do in person or if we were going to do an in person slash virtual event, we had discussed possibly doing kind of some follow up virtual events uh, after the not not real time, not uh, not live streaming, but kind of follow up virtual events where discussions could occur. So I just dropped that in to see if we were still thinking that way or. And if so, do we need to talk about that? This would be, so like the event itself would occur in the morning on the 30th. Oh, Sophia, did you have a comment too? I'm sorry. No, I'll, I'll let you finish first. Okay. And so the question is what, do we do something after the 30th? Is that right, Kevin? Correct. Okay. Yeah, we didn't so, really and... plan to record everything and then make those recordings available as sort of like here we're sharing it, but we're also, going to share it at a time when the speaker could be available for QA. So we have that in the RFP. Um, everyone has opted in, all three of them. <laughs> um, and then I think we were talking about live streaming um, as well. I'm assuming that's a separate conversation. Yeah, I think that's a separate conversation. I think the, the live streaming just, it just happens. We let people know it's there. Uh, but we're, I don't know that we really have uh, a ton of virtual participation with the live streaming. So the 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 virtual the follow up virtual events would allow us to have uh, let everyone in on the discussion uh, and have Q and A. Right? Exactly, that was kind of the motivation for them because they felt live streaming was pretty one way. Um, and even if there was some sort of Twitter or channel, it's just it's disjointed and. It's hard to engage in that in that like kind of multimodal mode, um, so that's what we were thinking. So I think if we we do both, then hopefully we will make it more accessible for folks that want to either watch the live stream or maybe we'll opt to watch the recordings later so that they can interact with the presenters. So and there was there was some discussion of possibly using Chaos Cast for part of this as well. Although yeah, I don't um, know how that would work. That was sort of an option for, again, further conversation, um, but that's, I don't know, I, I'm feeling less interested in that just because it's still pretty one way um, in terms of it would give 
Chaos Cast panelists an opportunity to ask questions, but not the general public um, that might be attending it. So I'm not opposed to having similar sessions as Chaos Cast podcasts, um, but it, I would do that separately or suggest it. I mean, we're, we're not actually doing anything yet because this is all hypothetical. <laughs> So would the idea here be like, Sophia, you would present at Seattle and that would be recorded. And then later that recording would be shown with you there to answer questions to people who might be watching that recording. Is that? Yeah, um, or we could do a say like we air it and then we have, I guess maybe similar to an office hours in terms of like a live Zoom link where you could join and discuss. Okay. Um, Okay. And we can figure out what format makes the most sense and minimizes the risk of Zoom bombing. Okay. And we, we could do multiple sessions there rather than trying to do it all in, in one go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, that sounds good. Um, and then is anybody in the back of their mind thinking, what if OSSNA turns purely virtual? I was thinking um, about that earlier today, actually. Um, yeah, I, I think about that a lot. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, you know, I mean, sure, sure. I mean, it, it the, I don't know, the LF seems, they'd have to do that pretty soon, I think. Yeah, their, their registration deadline is the end of the week. So, so maybe they're it, waiting for us to register. If it does happen, uh, our what is our plan B? Would our plan B to move directly to what uh, Sophie and I were just talking about, where we just Probably we get these so. recorded, we get these recorded yeah. presentations, and we, so. we break it down into four sessions and and just do it that so. way? Yes, I think so. So it's just so maybe, gonna be, we need a recording platform, but I'm assuming we can use Zoom and or other things. Yeah, we could figure something out. I think. But, yeah. I think we'd, we'd ask the uh, we'd ask the speakers to record their powerpoints or speeches and I mean we could do us, right we could do a live session on zoom it just would be a lot of zoom mm -hmm. I like the recording and then we could make like a channel or like on our on our channel like categorize them as OSSNA like post them up there okay um, I Sean, can I, or Kevin, can I turn it over to you just to finish out the few, or Sophia, or Ray, or Matt, or Sean, or I don't care who, the <laughs> last few items, or you can do it as a collective. I just have to drop off. I have a meeting at 1130. Yeah. Um, okay, so no I'm just I, turn. I just have two more questions, by the way. So okay. in regards to Chaos Con. So, so uh, the one I have is so if we're going to use if we're going to use the uh, the virtual sessions as Plan B, should we move forward with actually kind of scheduling and kind of creating the uh, the framework for that? Is it was virtual? I mean, I think we might as well wait until the registration deadline. I mean, chances are they're they're waiting to see what registration is. But the the plan is to do this. The, the virtual event portion anyway. Right. So we're we're planning on doing it, but it's also a plan B in case chaos con goes completely virtual. So should we just start planning that portion now? I guess well I guess what I'm saying is it'll be super different if it's completely virtual than if there's an attendee group and an online group. Well not necessarily because yeah. we were considering allowing virtual presenters if folks didn't feel comfortable joining and not letting them limit that in pre-recording. So it isn't I, terrible to start talking about it now. Okay. Yeah, I, I agree. I think the, the, the big difference would be who's doing the recording, right? So if they're, if they're at the in-person event, then we would record them. Uh, if, they're, if they're not there, we would just ask them to submit their presentation as a video recording. But otherwise, the, the logistics of it would be the same. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm fine with that. I think I was wondering, we only have three submissions in the CFP. If we want to do some sort of last call or push for that, uh, we were thinking that we might see an uptick after the talks came back for OSSNA, but that didn't really happen. But I also think it's partially maybe just because folks are just unsure about any event. <laughs> 
that was actually my second question. So if, if we only have three CFPs, how can we how can we boost that number? So yeah. I know in the past well, I mean, we've invited we the, people uh, to wait to the deadline. people we know to uh, submit. Yeah, I mean, I and we can we can push it back after the mailing list. We can retweet it, and then I was. I don't have the contacts here, but I thought it might be nice to reach out to former Chaos Cast panel, like the folks that came on the, the podcast, because I think there are some really awesome stories there mm -hmm. um, that could be great as a session. Um, I don't know if we want to recruit, I don't know how to recruit to them. I don't have that relationship or contact list, but I know others do. Um, so those are I was thinking for optional promotional channels. Uh, I think we reaching out to Georg and maybe asking him to uh, uh, contact the former panelists and request participation. That, that's probably how we would do that through Chaos Cast. Uh, we could also compile a list of the previous Chaos Con presenters and uh, send requests to them. Uh, that information, the previous Chaos Con presenters are all listed on the, the website for those okay. events. I think both of those are great ideas. And um, I think definitely Georg is the person to ask about the podcast. He seems to know everybody all of the time. It's really good. All right. So I'll, I can reach out to him about that. Elizabeth's still out, right? So we can't. She's the, the Twitter holder. I think she is the only Twitter holder. Yeah. Okay. Uh, no, Georg, I, I, may, I may be able. To, I may be able to tweet as well. I'm able to tweet actually. Okay. Yeah. Georg can tweet as well. Uh, additionally, we have the uh, we actually have the website blog automatically set up to uh, to tweet. So anything that goes through the website blog will get tweeted. So if we wanted to do a a short little blog, we could do that pretty easily as well. And I can actually, uh, I can schedule those blogs. So if we wanted to just uh, want to tweet that out every every hour for the next uh, 30 days, we could uh, see see how many followers we can lose. I don't pay enough attention to Twitter to know. But... Someone I shoot it on the mailing list or should I do that? I've never actually written anything to the mailing list, so I'm like hesitant that it's going to work. <laughs> Only responded. <laughs> that um, also sounds like a good idea. <laughs> additionally, I think in the last meeting, Don and I were talking about leaving a spot open for say like late day of lightning talks for people to sign up, especially if we just don't know who's going to show up. Those um, have always been fun. Yeah, I mean, we didn't. We've done them before. Option in there, but I think, I mean, I think many of us might not like, I think I'm going, but I haven't actually registered yet. So yeah. there's a chance that we don't actually know who's going to show up. And then that allows the folks in the room to, to have a little bit more airtime. Or yeah, share things. for sure. Oh. Yeah, um, I had to raise my desk because I helped my daughter move um, on Sunday. My, I hurt. It's day two of the over exercise, so sorry about that. So uh, my first conference presentation at my first conference was uh, a lightning talk at ChaosCon. It'll always be dear to me, uh, and I think that is a great opportunity for people to get out there and talk about what matters to them. I agree. I think it's a good idea. Someone's typing. Okay. Yeah. So we'll, we'll continue this conversation in the chaos cast, chaos con Slack. Yes. That sounds like a good plan.
Should we move on to the next item? Is yes, because I've lost track slightly of where we're at. <laughs> uh, the comment was just the ethics work. Can we table this until next week? And that makes sense because I think Garrick is driving it and he's not here. Yeah. So it's tabled until next week. Full agreement for me. So that's, I don't think we have to discuss that unless we do. Um, and the last item is not really a discussion item either. It's just something that I added. We had been talking about it last week, asking who was presenting at OSSNA. Um, I started a spreadsheet so that we could put in our talks. Um, I am going on Monday at one o'clock. So if there are other sessions that are happening later in the event, I'd love to plug them at the end of my session to say, hey, more conversations about metrics or chaos. Um, and I can, I can list out those sessions. So I think if we have a record of them, then we can promote various related metrics and chaos related sessions. So I just put that in as an FYI. Also, it might be fun to attend some of each other's sessions. So now we have everything in one place. It'd be nice. It would be nice to promote those on the, the chaos Twitter account as well. Agree. That is the whole agenda. Is there anything else you want to talk about? Uh, I don't have anything else to talk about. I only have a completely unhelpful comment, which is it looks like Sean got a tan. Yeah, um, I did, I guess, a little bit. Um, <laughs> I couldn't tell if it was a real tan or that your lighting changed. I, I uh, It's a long story, but I was in Hawaii for a week. So, in fact, I think I was in Hawaii the last time I was on this call. So yeah, I got a little tan there. It's amazing how quickly you can get tan. Uh, I didn't even, I didn't even honestly notice it about myself. I just thought I had my lighting wrong <laughs> at home. So, so it's a little helpful to have it be observed by others. Cause I don't think I really, I just assumed it was like a zoom lighting issue. Honestly, it could, it could be my partner's <laughs> laptop turns everything purple. So oh. <laughs> Prince would love that laptop. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, I think we've talked about everything. So All right. if there's anything else someone wants to bring up now, we can end the meeting. All right. Thanks, Sophia. Thanks, everybody. Have a great rest of your August until next week. Thanks. Bye. Bye.